All right, I want to talk about this model that you see hanging up here. That is a scale model of a Martin B-26 Marauder, World War II twin-engine medium bomber. The model was built by the grandson of the guy that flew it in combat. His grandfather called his airplane the Valkyrie, which is the reason for the uh, girl painted on it. At least that was his excuse. But if you study the model, the airplane had a rather short wingspan for a bomber, which meant that the landing speed was a bit faster than most bombers, about 15 miles an hour faster, and a rumor got started, it's a dangerous airplane to fly. They were training pilots to fly them down in Tampa, Florida, and those guys down there had ugly things to say about the airplane. They called it the Widowmaker. They called it the flying coffin. They had a few other terms I won't repeat. They had a joke about one a day in Tampa Bay, and all those pilots are trying to get out of that outfit because they don't want to go to war in that thing. So General Hap Arnold, commander of the Air Corps, sent Jimmy Doolittle down to fly it, and he reported that it's a fine aircraft, there's nothing wrong with it, but those guys are still trying to get out of that outfit. So if you have an airplane, you have airplanes, you have to have pilots. And General Arnold solved the problem this way. He had five brand new ones to send down to Tampa. And he ordered that all 10 pilots in them would be women. So when that many of them came in and landed all at once, they got noticed. And out of each airplane came girl pilots with orders signed by General Arnold to teach the men to fly the airplane and that solved the problem. That's what you call attitude adjustment. It was also a brilliant piece of general psychology. In World War II, there were two groups of American women who flew military airplanes, the WAFs, W-A-A-F, Women's Army Air Force Pilots, and the WASPs, the service pilots. The WAFs were ferry pilots that picked up the airplanes at the factories and delivered them everywhere. And they flew all of them, everything from the big bombers like this. This is a model of the B-29 that dropped the atomic bomb to the fighters like this big fighter as you see hanging up here, the P-47 Thunderbolt. They flew those to training planes, to transport airplanes, they flew them all. The WAFs were ferry pilots, I, I told you that. They picked up the airplanes at the factories and de delivered them everywhere. They flew in any kind of weather. In those days, we didn't have a global positioning system. You had a radio beam, and they could change the direction of that beam. And you flew, the, followed the beam into your destination. This woman is flying a B-25, twin engine medium bomber, somewhat like this, flying into New York City in really bad weather, following the beam. And all of a sudden, the cloud thinned out. There's a building right in front of her, and she managed to turn that big airplane and miss the building. After she safely got it on the ground, she called the authorities to tell them, you need to change the direction of that beam. You're leading people right into downtown New York City. The guy on the other end of the phone line said, little girl, you take care of your toys. We'll take care of serious business. The next day, a B-25 hit the Empire State Building and killed a bunch of people. How would you like to be that guy? No. <laughs> About uh, eight or nine months ago, we had 18 of those women in here on a little stage right out there. Senator Kay Bailey Hutchison was here presenting them with congressional gold medals. 60 years late, but they got them. About two years ago, we had 115 of those women in this room. It was the last reunion of the WASPs and there were four of those women that were down there in Florida when all that business took place. Now, you are gonna to learn to fly, aren't you? Good for you, kid.